Thank you for coming out to our growers meeting. First off, I would like to introduce you to our speakers for tonight's program. My name is Sydney Stables from the Natural Resources Conservation Service, the NRCS, serving you tonight as our water resource specialist. Hi, I'm Ellie McMullen, an environmental engineer from the DEQ, the Department of Environmental Quality. We also have representatives and staff here from Oregon State University to present you with our action plan. I'm Megan Scharf, a representative from Nutrigen, a crop specialist and a fertilizer agency professional. And I'm Alec Previtt from Agrochemicals Custom Application Services. Our team will provide you with background information about the groundwater issues that may be present in the area. Secondly, we would like to address the environmental issues and impacts within the area. We will then inform you of the current practices taking place in the Guama, and lastly, present you with a four-tiered plan as to how we can address the nitrate problems within the basin. We will also be providing you with a cost share benefits to increase your net farm earnings. The lead up to tonight's meeting has its roots in state and federal mandates. In Oregon, two acts have helped to shape our regulations and have impacted our political system within our communities. The Oregon Groundwater Quality Protection Act of 1989 was developed to prevent the contamination of groundwater. This act, along with the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act, have helped to ensure that Oregon and other states across the country have clean and safe drinking water. Groundwater management areas, also known as guamas, are designated by the DEQ when the groundwater in an area has elevated levels of contaminants. This map indicates areas where guamas are located in Oregon. Oregon currently has three groundwater management areas designated as noted on the map. Our main focus tonight will be the area you see on the left of the map, the Southern Willamette Valley Guama. The Southern Willamette Valley Guama is comprised of approximately 230 square miles of land. The Guama boundary begins on the northern edge of the Eugene Springfield metropolitan area and extends 50 miles north just beyond the city of Corvallis. The Guama encompasses the 100-year Willamette River floodplain and a number of tributaries that flow into the Willamette River. About 93% of the Guama is in agricultural land use, which is a little over 111,000 acres of farmland. The problem within the Guama is outlined through these demographics. There are currently over 170 crops grown in the Southern Willamette Valley management area. However, the dominant crop is grass seed. The problem present here is the nitrogen requirement for grass seed crop production. Nitrates are the number one cause of contaminated groundwater which comes directly from fertilizer applications. Grass seed production in the spring uses 100 to 140 pounds of nitrogen per acre, along with a fall application of 30 to 40 pounds per acre. To add to this issue, the majority of the soils overlying the shallow aquifers in the area are very permeable. Also, the high amount of rainfall in the area makes the shallow groundwater very susceptible to any land use contamination. The groundwater in the valley is the main source of domestic uses for 8,700 residents who draw water from shallow wells. Agricultural irrigation and livestock enterprises take place in the region. Water from rivers is used to irrigate crops and over 80% draw from shallow wells. The Southern Willamette Valley Guama ranges from 7 ppm to 20 parts per million of contaminants present in the water source. I will now hand it over to our crop specialist to talk to you about a shift in crop production patterns. The graph shown depicts the trends in crops grown in this area from the 1990s to present day. In the 1990s, the crops were predominantly peppermint and row crops with grass seed production accounting for just 9%. Due to the spike in prices received for grass seed crops, the current cropping patterns have shifted to over 33% grass seed production within the area. This shift has also increased the amount and type of fertilizers used in the Guama. In the 1990s, the Southern Willamette Valley was not categorized as a Guama. This wasn't until 2004, which is within the same five-year window of crop changes and grass seed domination. Hi, I'm Ellie McMullen, the environmental engineer. This graph outlines the specific sources of nitrogen by human actions and outlines the ecological and environmental issue related to our problem. As noted on the graph, we found that the largest contributor is crops and agriculture, 
which is what we are going to be focusing our action plan on today. Agriculture is the largest contributor of nitrates in our groundwater throughout this area. Here at the NRCS, we have a soil web mapping system that is used to depict soils in the area. This is a way for us to focus on leaching on specific farms. The area delineated has been referenced with the nitrate leaching index. The area displayed in red shows a high risk for nitrate leaching. This example is a representative of many soils within the Guama, displaying a need for more closely monitored fertilizer applications. Identifying fields and areas sensitive to nitrogen is important. Locating these areas are key for growers to reevaluate the fertilizer application methods that are best suited for the area. Through long term studies, the DEQ has identified how nitrate levels affect the environment. When assessing the problem, we found that nitrates have large impacts on the environment. They negatively impact the surface water quality, stimulate algae growth, degrade soil quality, and pollute our groundwater. These impacts can have a lasting effect on agriculture, soil health, and wildlife in the area. When fertilizer, fertilizers are applied to agricultural fields, they are absorbed into the soil and taken up by the plant. However, depending on the conditions and application rate, not all the nitrates are absorbed by the plants. This can lead to leaching and runoff. This can affect the quality of groundwater and surface water. The key to reducing this is practicing efficient on-farm management of nitrogen. Efficient use of fertilizers can boost your yields and save you money without affecting the groundwater. We have now addressed the background information as to what is causing this problem and what effects nitrates can have. We've developed a plan to address each of the problem areas, taking into consideration the environmental and cost impacts of the solution. Our plan is to preserve and enhance the health of underground aquifers, all while maintaining traditional and or local appropriate land uses. We emphasize voluntary strategies that you can implement into your farm operations. The overall objective of the plan encompasses four main components, which include implementing the use of cover crops, providing cost efficient nitrogen urease inhibiting fertilizers, providing a service for split application of nutrients, increasing soil testing, all provided with cost share incentives. As the crop specialist, I'm going to help you to better understand the benefits of cover crops. The benefits of cover crops include producing and scavenging nitrogen, preventing erosion, they build soil quality, suppress weeds, recycle nutrients, protect our water quality, and enhance the wildlife habitat. Cover crops can boost your profits the first year you plant them. They can improve your bottom line even more over the years as their soil improving effects accumulate. I'm here tonight to discuss some fertilizer technology that will help your fertilizers work better for you. This technology is a yeast inhibiting fertilizer that can replace the need for traditional fertilizers. This technology will help to eliminate leaching and the release of nitrogen into the atmosphere. Greater than 50% of applied fertilizer nitrogen is lost to the atmosphere. However, your reef inhibitors help to protect against ammonia volatilization, keeping your fertilizer nitrogen in the urea form, a form of nitrogen available to plants, thus limiting the release of atmospheric nitrogen. Your reef inhibitors break down with time, but typically can protect against ammonia loss depending on temperature and moisture conditions. This results in a, decreasing in a decrease in leaching and runoff compared to other fertilizer methods. This also means you get more usable crop nitrogen for your crops, potentially increasing the yield. In simple terms, you can apply less fertilizer to your crops due to less loss and more uptake. Nutrigen will provide Agrotain and Limus technology at a 10% crop reduction of current spring fertilizers for any producer. Hi, I'm Alec from Agrochem Custom Applicators here to talk to you about benefits of split application fertilizer. Split nitrogen fertilizer applications increase the efficiency of nitrogen applied to crops. Split applications have the most value on soils with high leaching potentials, such as those around the valley. Matching the applications and timing with the growth of plants is critical. And noted here on the graph, you can see how plants go through several phases of nitrogen uptake. You want to apply the nitrogen just before the time of maximum crop uptake to ensure that the plants will absorb the greatest amount of nutrients. In addition to the numerous benefits of this method, 
Agrichem will also be waiving the custom application fees for any farmer wanting to come on board with our split application service for nutrients. This will save you both time and money. Our custom rates are $8 an acre, will be waived if you partake in this program. We would like to have access to your farm to provide more widespread soil testing. This data will be made available to you free of charge to help you better manage the nitrogen on your farm. There are numerous benefits of soil testing as listed, and we highly encourage you to opt in with this aspect of our program. A lysometer testing tool will be used to assess the effectiveness of our methods. Lysomate sampling and subsequent analysis can indicate if you're applying too much fertilizer or not enough. By adjusting the amount and frequency of application, you could improve the net returns on your farm. We will also be using the TriOS Opus sensors. These operate by pulses of UV light, which are transmitted through a sample path of water, known as spectrum analysis. The amount of UV absorbed by the water sample is proportional to the concentration of nitrogen nitrate in the water. Just how are we going to pay for this program? We've secured two grant funding sources, one from the Oregon 319 Nonpoint Source Implementation Grant for $12,000 and the Clean Water State Revolving Funds for $250,000 to cover crop share costs. Our emphasis is on the use of urease technology, cover crops, split applicators of nutrients, and free soil testing linked to mapping software. The service and the data we will be providing you will help to make you more informed management decisions on your farm and protect the environment and the sustainability of your farm operations. Our plan is to help reduce nitrate levels to less than seven milligrams per liter and to rescind the declaration of the guama. Our plan preserves and enhances the health of the aquifer, all while maintaining traditional and or local appropriate land uses. We want to help sustain agriculture in the region. Thank you for your time and we will be available afterwards to answer any of your specific questions.